Shalom, brothers and sisters. So I posted on the community wall about the Kerch Bridge, but let's just discuss it a little bit more in depth. I think it deserves a bit of attention. Kerch Bridge linking Russia to Crimea damaged in explosion. Authorities say three dead as Russian opens a criminal probe into the blast that blew up the vital bridge linking Moscow annexed Crimea to the mainland. Now, the reason this is such a big story is because this is their easiest, best route for supplying their troops, getting new troops and tanks and army into the battleground, which is Ukraine. And that is now damaged. So now they've got a whole another route that they have to take. The Speaker of Russia's lower house of parliament, the Duma, called it an act of war. So again, we're pushing for the war statement and for actually declaring war. For once they declare war, they can use unconventional weapons. The country's investigative committee said on Saturday it had initiated a criminal case in connection with the incident on the Crimean Bridge, adding a truck was blown up. According to the preliminary information, this morning on the automobile part of the Crimean Bridge from the side of Taman Peninsula, a truck was blown up which caused seven fuel tanks to ignite on a train leading towards the Crimean Peninsula. As a, as a result, Two lanes partially collapsed, partially in a mega big way right into the ocean. Three people have been found dead so far as the result of the truck explosion. You know what, I can't help think to myself, they're besties with China. China has a problem like this, they fix it in 24 hours. They maybe need to lean on those expertise in this situation. <laughs> they're believed to be passengers of the car, the victims. That was near the truck when it exploded. The bodies of two victims, a man and a woman, have already been recovered from the water. Their identities are being established. The investigators have also established the details of the truck and its owner, registered in Russia's southern Krasnodar region, and began searching the place of residence. Officials said Russian President Vladimir Putin was informed about the explosion and had ordered the creation of a government panel to deal with the emergency. In a decree issued hours after the blast, Putin said the Federal Security Service, the FSB, would be responsible for strengthening security for the bridge as well as the infrastructure supplying electricity and natural gas to the peninsula, according to Interfax. Ukrainian officials celebrated the incident, obviously, but did not claim responsibility, with the head of Ukraine's National Security and Defense Council Oleksiy Danilov posting a video of the burning bridge on social media <laughs> alongside a video of Marilyn Monroe singing Happy Birthday Mr. President, a reference to Putin's 70th birthday on Friday. Ukrainian presidential advisor Mikhailo Podolyak meanwhile suggested late Saturday that Moscow was involved in the blast. It is worth noting that the truck that detonated, according to all indications, entered the bridge from the Russian side. So the answer should be sought in Russia, he said. Meanwhile, Alexandre Votarafes, editor-in-chief of Swiss Military Review, cast doubt that a truck was solely behind the explosion, saying a vehicle carrying explosives is probably not going to produce this much damage without other explosives being planted on the bridge. I think we need to take with a grain of salt the story that is being told to us about how this truck arrived and all of a sudden produced all this damage, he told Al Jazeera. The most realistic are two explanations. Number one, a laser guided bomb of at least 125 kilos. Number two, sabotage from special forces or partisans and I think this is what we need to explore. This does strike at Vladimir Putin's prestige. It does strike Vladimir Putin's image of control. And I think under the bravado of Ukraine at the moment, there might be some nervousness about what his response is going to be to the situation. It also gives the Russians a very big headache when it comes to supplying the southern front in Ukraine, because the Russian army at the moment is largely supplied by rail networks and that main railway network for the Southern Front came through Crimea across the Kerch Bridge. He said now the only other route by rail is via the north shore of the Sea of Azov and that is currently 30 to 40 kilometers from the front line. 
Now, as someone who lives in a place that works in kilometers, let me just quickly assert as well, 30 to 40 kilometers is not far. It's quite manageable. So it's not that the war effort or the military operation effort is hampered in any way. I think this is more just to remove the convenience of how they could move supplies and everything to the front lines and into ready positions. I do think Putin will react, and I think this might be the push he needs to declare war at some stage and get on with it. Um, it is going to affect his prestige, his sense of control, all those things. But again, as with the pipeline, people are blaming Russia for damaging themselves. Doesn't make sense. Seems like a big cover-up to me. Um, the same way that that guy is clearly and rightfully saying that truck wouldn't have caused that much damage. There had to have been extra explosives or a bomb laser-guided. I'm on board with that guy's figuring what happened there. And the same way as things that have happened in the past where we've been sold one story, but another story is actually what happened. This is the case here. So the Kerch Bridge, definitely interesting and definitely another attack, in my opinion, a strike back at Russia, um, as was the pipeline. And again, Russia being blamed for harming themselves and stopping themselves doesn't make any sense to me personally. But uh, I think we will see fallout from this. I, I do think it's hilarious to Marilyn Monroe. Happy birthday, Mr. President. I might have done that myself if I was there. Um, it is funny. Come on, really funny. Uh, but yeah, I think they should be nervous about what's coming. And I think we should just carry again, once again, all the innocence in the past of all of this madness up in prayer for their protection, for them finding Jesus Christ and turning to the Lord in time. And we know and we assert constantly that God is in control and He is where we place our trust and our hope. So stay positive, keep looking up, keep watching. The hour draws near. God bless. Shalom.